So my name is Anne McNeil, I'm a Professor of Tobacco Addiction at King's College London and I'm the lead author of the 2018 uh, review on e-cigarettes which was commissioned by Public Health England. So what we did is we carried out a review of evidence on e-cigarettes that came out since our last report in 2015 and we covered a wide range of issues looking at patterns of use of e-cigarettes among young people and among adults. Uh, we also looked at knowledge and attitudes towards e-cigarettes and we looked also at health risks and whether e-cigarettes are helping smokers to stop smoking. What we found um, supported the evidence uh, that we published in our last review, uh, particularly that e-cigarettes are much less harmful than smoking tobacco cigarettes um, and that they are helping, we believe, tens of thousands of smokers to stop smoking each year. However, we were concerned about the misperceptions um, that smokers have about the relative risks of e-cigarettes compared to tobacco cigarettes. So less than half of smokers believe that e-cigarettes uh, are less harmful than tobacco cigarettes. And um, we think that those misperceptions might be due to their misunderstanding the role of nicotine. Nicotine is the reason why smokers smoke, but it, it's not the nicotine that kills them. So if, if smokers can be encouraged to try less harmful forms of nicotine delivery, like e-cigarettes, um, then we believe that will be a really important step to improve their health. So we want to be able to support smokers to stop smoking as quickly as possible and there's a variety of different things they can use including e-cigarettes to help them to do so. My name is Amy Brose, I'm a senior lecturer in the addictions department at King's College London and one of the co-authors of the PhD report on e-cigarettes and heated tobacco products. I specifically focused on three aspects. One was the prevalence of e-cigarette use in adults in Great Britain, the other one was harm perception, and finally heated tobacco products. If we look at the prevalence of e-cigarette use among adults in Great Britain, it has remained at just under 6% for the last three years or so. And we see that most use is among smokers or ex-smokers, and it's now actually more ex-smokers than smokers who are using e-cigarettes. Among never smokers, use remains very, very rare, so it's just about half a percent who say they are using e-cigarettes, and this is actually fairly similar to those how many say they're using nicotine replacement therapy. And the most common reason for using e-cigarettes remains to stop smoking. Interestingly, we see a shift in socioeconomic backgrounds, so in previous years we saw that more smokers from higher socioeconomic backgrounds were using e-cigarettes, but recently it seems to have leveled off, so smokers from lower socioeconomic backgrounds are just as likely to use them to stop smoking. When we looked at harm perception, we saw that there was a large, or just about half of all adults in Britain think that using an e-cigarette is less harmful than smoking. And this is important because smoking kills two out of three long-term smokers. And among smokers who have never tried an e-cigarette, it's actually even lower, so just a third of those think that using e-cigarettes e-cigarette is any less harmful than smoking. So this is a group that would actually benefit from switching. But when we asked a large group of smokers if switching would reduce the harm substantially, they didn't think it would. These misperceptions seem similar for nicotine replacement therapy. So when we asked adults again, they also, about half of adults in Great Britain think that using nicotine replacement therapy is just as harmful as smoking. And we think a lot of that, those misperceptions may be due to a lack of knowledge around nicotine. Finally, when we looked at heated tobacco products, so these are a new, new type of tobacco product. They aim to heat tobacco, so this is different from e-cigarettes, which heat liquid. And a variety of products are coming onto the market in Britain and also in other countries, and they have enjoyed some success in Japan, where e-cigarettes are not available. We looked at the evidence, and the evidence suggests that heated tobacco products are less harmful than tobacco smoking. However, the limitation is that almost all of the evidence was published by tobacco manufacturers testing their own products. I'm Debbie Robson. I'm a senior postdoc researcher in tobacco addiction and a mental health nurse and a tobacco dependence treatment advisor. In this report, we found evidence that e-cigarettes help people stop smoking or reduce their cigarette consumption. However, we need more research to confirm this. We drew on a range of evidence from different sources to reach this conclusion. And in the report, we provide an overview of systematic reviews of e-cigarettes for smoking cessation and reduction. But the evidence uh, is mixed. 
When we look at what's happening in England though, we get a much clearer picture and we use two data sources. We use the Small Cunning Toolkit study, which is a repeated monthly series of national household surveys of approximately 1,800 adults, and that's conducted by colleagues from UCL. And we also use data from NHS Digital, who report the outcomes of smokers who set a quick date with the National Network of Stop Smoking Services. The Smoking Toolkit study tells us that for the past few years, quit rates in England have been at their highest and that around 40% of people report using an e-cigarette in their most recent quit attempt, compared to about 15-18% to 18 who report using an RT that they've bought in a shop. And in this PHE review, we include several estimates of the impact that e-cigarettes may have had on quit success. So again, colleagues from UCL previously reported that e-cigarette use had contributed to around 20,000 new successful quit attempts a year. And we've updated this estimate and report that around up to 57,000 additional quits a year may have resulted from using an e-cigarette. And although we need to be cautious about this figure, in England e-cigarettes are a popular choice and have helped tens of thousands of smokers quit. Using a different data source and a different sample, we've looked at if e-cigarettes help smokers quit if they go along to a stop smoking service and get support from a trained stop smoking advisor. And in these services, most people are using an RT to quit, and very few are using an e-cigarette. But again, we have to be cautious about this data because we can't directly compare success rate between the methods of quitting. What this data uh, indicates is that if a smoker uses an e-cigarette as part of a spotted quit attempt, either alone or in combination with licensed stop smoking products, their quit rates are just as good, if not better, than those who use just a licensed product. So drawing on a range of evidence from different sources, in England we see a consistent picture that e-cigarettes are helping smokers to quit. However, we need more research to confirm this, and in particular research that includes better measurement to capture what it is about e-cigarettes that lead to success, and inclusion of outcomes that are meaningful and relevant for e-cigarette users. Hi, my name's Rob Corder and I'm a researcher at King's College London, and I was working on the recent e-cigarette report. Um, I was looking at incidences of e-cigarette malfunction um, as well as instances of uh, poisoning from e-liquids. Uh, with poisonings we found that incidences of e-liquid poisoning were rare, um, that they were usually of very, very low severity and very short-lived, although some severe instances were recorded. Um, and many of these can be prevented by keeping them in appropriate child lock containers, keeping them in a, a secure place away from children. Um, with fires, we found that again there were instances of fires caused by e-cigarettes. This was from uh, UK fire services. Again, they were very rare and in fact they were dwarfed by um, instances of fires caused by smokers' materials. Um, the third instance was about um, when uh, e-cigarette batteries malfunction when they're being used so they're either in a pocket or in someone's hand. And again, the, the consequences of this can be quite severe um, and can require surgery, uh, skin grafts and things like that. But again, they seem to be very, very rare and, um, and need to be monitored as with any other uh, personal uh, electrical product.